Hi everyone and welcome to this new episode. Today is going to be really short because I'm going to do something that I just discovered in a client visit. It's something that is going to be really interesting, especially if you're dealing with a lot of footage that has a lot of grain, especially heavy grain, grain that couldn't be properly treated like using clarity or using DVO grain. It's going to be an interesting workflow because we're going to do two things. We're going to do a channel separation so we can treat each channel separately. And also we are going to do a use case for the DBO Velvet. The new DBO that it's a bit more extreme with the denoising, but it works really good in these particular cases when we have a lot of grain or a lot of noise. This footage has a lot of grain, especially has a lot of heavy grain. Let me show you here. Yeah, the grain is quite heavy and okay, let me just, yeah, the grain is really quite heavy. In this case, what would you normally do is like use some type of clarity or use DVO grain or use any type of combination of those. But problem is that when you're doing something like that, is you're treating all of the channels in the same way. Well, let me show you something. Let's pause here and let me show you each individual channel and how much grain is present in each of those. So I'm going to show you first the red channel. You can see it's, the grain is not really that bad. We have some detail here here as well. Now I'm going to show you the green channel. It's quite good. It's similar to the red. And finally, I'm going to show you the blue channel. Now this is where the problem lies. If we compare the green and the red, you're going to be needing only a small degraining process, something like the clarity. You wouldn't need a complete degraining process like velvet or the bio grain. But in the blue channel, you're going to need something really, really heavy because the amount of grain is really high. And you can see you're even losing a lot of the features here, where in the green and the red, you have a lot of the features and a lot of the high frequencies are present. In the blue channel, you don't have any of those. So the idea that I have is, why don't we start selecting each of these channels and work them independently? Okay, how do we do that? It's easy, we have a neat, tool here in Phoenix called Channel Extract. You can find it here in Image Effects. These are really easy to use tool because you only have three options. You either want to extract the green, the red, the blue, or the alpha. So in this particular case, we want to extract the red. And then on the next track, we will extract the green. And then in the other track, we will extract the blue. Track B3 is going to be the red. Track B2 is going to be in the green and track B1 is going to be the blue. That's the main idea of this composition. This is the red channel as an individual channel. Okay, we have some flickering. We can deal with that. The image also needs a bit of stabilization. I could do that in a previous process, but for this demonstration, we're going to let it be that way. Okay, so I'm going to flicker this. And the idea is that since each channel is individual, we can also do a flicker individually. All of the process that we would normally do as a merge RGB composite, we will do that in each of the RGB channels. I know it's going to be three times the work, but in this special case, where you need to treat the three channels separately, it's going to work really good. And you can be a lot more subtle with your changes. You know, you can see here. Yeah, it's really subtle. And then we do the same with the green channel. In order to access the second layer, you need to disable the selection and track TV so you can access the other set of tools in the next layer. And we're going to do the same. We're going to do a channel extract and it's going to be green. And we're going to do a DVO flicker as well and a green GT. I'm going to show you the last part at the end, the composite that you're seeing here. It's going to make sense at the end. And then finally, we're going to do the blue. The blue is going to need an individual process. So first thing, we're going to do the channel extract. It's going to be blue. Then we're going to do the flicker. And now this is, like I told you, a use case for velvet. So let me show you a particular place where both of the actor faces are located. And now we use Velvet. So most of the time Velvet is going to be a bit too extreme. Uh, a lot of people that I talk about, they don't like Velvet the way it handles uh, small details or high frequencies, especially on film, because it destroys grain. But in this particular case where we have a lot of grain in a place that we don't want it, this is exactly what we needed. If you are seeing here, my settings, I'm basically upping the softness and aggressiveness and increasing a bit of the contrast and of the details, increasing the safety as well, because sometimes this could generate some type of temporal artifacts. If I, if I zoom in a bit more, then you will see the results here. I'm going to show you the blue channel individually. 
yeah you can see the difference here right we are going from an extremely noisy footage or extremely grainy footage to something that can be a bit more manageable and of course we are losing a lot of detail but it doesn't matter because it's only the blue channel most of the details are going to be on the green and the red and now let's join them back together so in order for us to join the channels together we have a neat tool here in phoenix it's on the composite tab it's going to be called channel combine and i'm telling the red channel to channel combine red so it's going to take the b3 and it's going to combine it with the b2 knowing that this is the red channel and the other should be the green let me disable the second one so you can see it more clearly so if i do the channel combine and i only use the first channel that's going to be the red what it's going to create is some type of duotone it looks like an old kodak process right because we only have the red and the green i mean this could also work for aesthetic purposes i mean some people kind of like this style clearly we don't have any blue channel the blue channel is completely gone you could do this if you wanted the blue channel is so noisy that you don't want to mess with it anymore so let's go here to the second one and channel combine instead of red is going to be green it's not going to make sense right now because the red channel is disabled but once i enable the red channel everything goes back to normal so now we have the full rgb image if i zoom in in the faces now you're gonna see how much grain has been reduced and a good place to see it is here on the scopes i'm gonna show you the scopes colored so you know exactly which channel i'm talking about instead of parallel mode it's gonna be parallel rgb i'm gonna increase a bit of the opacity and the gain so you can see here every time i disable it you kind of get this really thick blue channel that's really full of noise you can see here the noise and once i activate all the effects i get this thin blue channel that's a bit more manageable that it's kind of similar to the details that we have in the red and the green and we are not completely eliminating all of the green we're just managing the green in the place that where it makes sense in the blue channel we are kind of doing the red in the green a bit not a lot where we are doing the brunt of the work is going to be on the blue channel and that's the idea behind this you do an individual grain management and this workflow could also be applied to other things let's say to the flickering even dust because sometimes one of the dyes has more dust than the other ones this is an idea i wouldn't tell you do all of your restorations separating the three channels no it's gonna take way too much but in these particular cases where you have a subject that needs a bit more care then you need to be a little more subtle with the grain management it could be a great idea so final result is gonna look something like this if i do a split here you can see exactly what i mean by the grain management yeah obviously in motion is way more noticeable and i'm not telling you this is, could be the final result you could also apply a bit more degrading if you want on top of it but now the three channels are kind of in the same place if we look at them individually now they're gonna look like this red channel green channel and this is the blue channel yeah you see the difference now right so this is the main idea behind this new workflow i hope that you can apply it to more interesting things i once did something like this with the flickering especially since the blue channel was almost completely destroyed in one of the pictures that i was working um this is it for today thank you and hope you had a great week bye bye